。ウロニケンチンザファイナルの笑顔は本当いいですよ This is David Stark from Watcher Pass, and today I'm going to talk about Rurouni Kenshin the Final, which is the first movie in a two movie series that's now streaming on Netflix. I already, I already reviewed the, the beginning, which is the second movie. It's kind of confusing.、And、the first movie is the final, which is towards the end of the Rurouni Kenshin saga. And the second movie is the beginning, which goes all the way to the start of the Kenshin saga. So it's a little. Strange, but you know, it works. And、um, it, the thing that I love most is it's a Kenshin movie and it's actually good. So, you know, there you go. That's the review. You don't have to watch anymore. But if you do want to know more, I'm going to talk a little about the film. I'm going to talk about three things I liked, three things I didn't like, and then talk about the ending.、Uh, so, if you don't know what Kenshin is or Roni Kenshin is, or you know, maybe you had. You went outside as a kid and didn't, didn't watch anime like I did.、Uh, Roni Kenshin is a beloved anime. It's,、um, it's, It started as a manga, and, which is the, the books. And then it had, if I remember right, it had like a TV series, a very long TV series、uh, that went about 90 something episodes.、Um, and then, you know, that was based on the original books. And then they released a few OVAs or original video, original video adaptations, I think. We'll go with that.、Uh, OVAs, they're, they're like basically short movies. Um, or you know, normal length movies or, or special episodes that take place outside of the anime.、Um, the Kenshin OVAs were, were kind of striking because they were a lot more serious. They had a much cleaner, distinct animation style. They, they were a little more realistic looking you know, in terms of animation.、Uh, and they were very bloody, whereas the series itself was, it wasn't kid focused, but it was more kid friendly. There was less violence. Kenshin didn't kill us.、Uh, you know, it had a colorful, bright style. Whereas the OVAs were much more serious. They were darker、um, and they were a lot bloodier. And one of the OVAs、uh, went into kind of Kenshin's backstory, which is essentially what the、uh, second movie, Kenshin, where we're running Kenshin, the beginning, is based on. And another one of the OVAs went into like the end of Kenshin further in the future. So, Roni Kenshin, the final. I, I don't think it takes place in any of the act, like, I don't think it's a remake of any of the animated films. I think it's based on the manga. And then there, there, are instant, there are hints of what the final has in it in some of the other works. In, in the first OVA, The Trust and Betrayal,、uh, one of the main characters in the final has an appearance. And then in, I think, the second OVA, which I think is called Reflections,、um, there, some, some of the things that take place in the final had like flashbacks. Scenes, but nothing, it didn't have like a major overall story. It was, I think, this was a set that was in the manga and didn't translate over into the TV series or into an OVA for whatever reason. I might be wrong. I did some quick research this morning. It's, it's very tough to figure out you know, what was in each because、uh, there's so much work, but I don't think this was specifically in any original adaptation.、It's, I think this is a new kind of retelling of the manga story or maybe a, a new recreation of the manga story. So, in terms of the Kenshin story, this takes place later in the TV series. You have all the characters that you love from the TV series, they all make appearances in the film.、Uh, and I think it, it kind of, I think this is meant to replace the bridged ending. So, the, the, if I remember right, the TV series followed the manga for like the first 60 or so episodes. And then the last season, I think it veered off for whatever reason.、And、I think the, this movie kind of is meant to. Fix that because the ending of the Kenshin TV series was not the most well regarded. It was fine, but I think it could have been better. So, in the film, you have Kenshin, who is this he, he was an old assassin、uh, who, during the,、uh, the wars that kind of took down the emperor in Japan. It's in like the 1860s.、Um, and he was an assassin for the rebels.、Uh, but after he kind of took down the emperor and brought about the new age, he said he was never going to kill again. So, after that, he He took his sword and blunted the edge, or he kind of reversed the blade. So his, his sword has a blunt edge and then kind of a, a blade on the back end. So you can kind of hit people, but they don't, you don't kill them, you don't cut them, you just kind of beat them.、Uh, but he's so good that he can beat everyone, even though he doesn't actually like kill them or, or maim them. Because he was such a ruthless killer in his past, that sometimes comes back to bite him from people that maybe don't like him for his past actions. And maybe that's the plot of r o n y Kent in the final. Now, Uh, I'm going to preface this by saying this will have spoilers. Obviously, I'm talking about the plot, I'm talking about、uh, things that happen in the film and the ending. So, if you don't want to know what happens in the film, 
it's on Netflix. You can pop it in. It's like two hours and 20 minutes. You can go watch it and then come back. Uh, or if you, you know, just want to know what's in the film or you want to hear some thoughts, by all means, let's go. But, uh, you know, you've been warned. So things I liked about this film. The first is it's Kenshin. I mean, it's it's one of my favorite anime and it's recreated on the big screen. Uh, so you've got all the characters that you love from the TV series. You've got Kenshin. You've got Sagara. You've got Kadodono. You've got uh, Yahiko. Um, you've got all these characters that you love and they're, they're now on the big screen and they look like they're, they look accurate, which is, a, I was very impressed with because the film, you know, the anime is anime and it has some kind of out there character designs and they did recreate that, you know, from the anime and from the manga, they recreated that for this film and they look accurate. Uh, so it's got everything, you know, you love about Kenshin, but now it's on the big screen. Now it has a big production value and it's a really, really well done, um, well done movie. So, the second thing I love about this film is this, it has the same speed and violence as the anime. And that's something I noted in Kenshin the Beginning, because in Kenshin the Beginning, which is based on the OVA, the animation is, or the, the action is very fast and precise and violent. And it was a very big departure. And the movie gets that. It, it's a really impressive feat because you get this really fast action that doesn't look like people are just flailing around and doesn't look like it's sped up. I'm, they probably did speed it up just to kind of, you know, make it be almost superhuman, but it doesn't look that way. It looks like just someone who is very fast, who is very efficient, taking people out. And Kenshin, the final, which is the first movie, has that as well. The action in this film is very fast paced. It's very, you know, elaborate. You've got some really big set pieces and you've got some very, very fast sword play. Uh, and it all looks, you know, impressive and natural uh, and just like these, you know, almost like you know a large kung fu movie except it's it's kenshin which i loved and it also has a lot of the violence like kenshin himself doesn't do much violence because he swore not to kill and he has a blunted sword but other people didn't and there is a lot of violence and that is another striking feature of this film that harkens back to the ovas which were a little more serious uh the third thing i really loved is the care i mean you can tell that this film was made by people that liked or loved the series, loved the original works and wanted to recreate, you know, the feel and the look and the characters. All the characters look like how they did in the comics and the anime. All the sets look really good. They're very, very well done. You have these really beautiful kind of uh, feudal Japan era type buildings that are recreated. And then they just, they get destroyed because the effects are so good. You've got like buildings exploding, buildings on fire. You have some really, really, intense visuals and you can tell that this entire work was put together by people that wanted to make you know a true cinema experience for Kenshin and it shows it shows through in the in the production it shows through in the characters that they put and, and the way that they act it's a very very well done adaptation you know sometimes with video games or animated adaptations I think the heart's in the right place but maybe the budget's not in the right place or maybe they just don't understand you know the work as well this you can tell that it was made from a place of love, which I really liked seeing. And it's really impressive to translate that on the screen. Things I didn't love about this film. Uh, the first, it, it's a little slower than Kenshin the beginning. So I guess the first film, Kenshin the final, is slower than the second film, Kenshin the beginning. And that might also just be because I you know, didn't know the story as well, didn't appreciate this story as much as I appreciated uh, Kenshin the beginning. But it felt like some of the... In the, in the middle, it slows down. And also some of the fights, I know I say slower, but the fights are a little bit more elaborate, which can lead to a slowdown, which is weird because you have a fight, but the fight goes on for like 20 minutes. So you, you don't get bored, but it just, the action kind of loses its its impact after you've been going for that long and they've you know, been going back and forth for a while. And so I, I think that, and that caused the film to feel slower. It's, it's still a good movie. It's still a, a loving recreation, but especially some of those fight scenes did drag on. And some, some of the other scenes dragged on, and I'll talk about that in a second for my third point. Um, the second thing I didn't love is there's a strange relationship thing. And this is, this is vintage Kenshin, so I don't, you know, I don't fault the movie for it, but it, it did feel very antiquated where Kenshin himself, all, you know, he, he and his friend roommate i guess girlfriend uh karu you know they, they've lived together for years but they all they never kind of like interact as boyfriend and girlfriend it's always kind of implied and that's something that's in the tv show i assume it's in the manga 
So I guess they're being accurate, but it, it felt weird when, you know, people are like, oh, you know, what does Kyra think of it? And like Kenshin will like blush and like she'll blush and like you, you live together essentially. Like you've been together for like four years. It's not a big surprise. So, I mean, that's, that is vintage for the property, it did, but it did feel weird to see it in a big screen in a film that had such good production values and you still had this kind of like outdated ish or just kind of weird, you know, not talking about the relationship kind of issues, but it's Kenshin. It's what it is. Um, and the last thing that I didn't love, and this is only probably because I didn't love it because I saw the beginning first and the final second. Uh, the final uses a good chunk of footage from the beginning. So uh, the first movie, the final, uses a good chunk of footage from the second movie, the beginning. So when I saw the beginning first, I was like, oh, this is great. Everything's wonderful. And then when I saw the final second, I was like, oh, I've seen this. I saw this like two days ago and I already know this story. And those, the scenes that it reuses are also sometimes slow. So that can also lead to this film feeling a little slower because I was seeing footage that I'd already seen before. Um, so I guess if you watch this in the release order, I guess not even the correct chronological order, but the release order, you might not have that problem. But I did because I, I just saw the beginning a few days ago. So uh, going to the ending. In this film, you have this new character that's introduced, Inishi, who is from the manga, and he has some appearances in some of the later Kenshin OVAs. I think he's in he has his appearance in the Trust and Betrayal OVA, and he has an appearance in uh, the Reflections OVA. Uh, but he is, we find out, he's uh, Tomoe's brother, and Tomoe is Kenshin's first wife. Who, spoilers, 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 but you probably already know this. She was killed when some assassins attacked Kenshin when they were hiding out during the revolution. Well, so she sacrificed herself to save Kenshin. She kind of put herself in the way of someone who was attacking him to prevent that person from slashing him. And Kenshin, not being able to see, slashes the foe that he knew was in front of him and cuts the foe and his uh, wife, Tomoe. So she dies. Uh, but her brother, we find out... Uh, knew I, I i think he saw this at least knew about it so he knew that kenshin had killed his sister and so he then went to get revenge so anishi comes back he's now the head of like a crime gangster family in china he's worked his way up uh and he comes back and does a whole bunch of terrible things to kenshin's hometown so anishi kidnaps karu don't know and then uh, that, that's how he says it in the anime so i i I'm kind of instinctively saying Karu don't know because that's just how I've like heard it for so long. But so Inishi kidnaps uh, Karu and then takes her to, I think, like a palace of some sort um, and then sends a bunch of assassins to take out members of the town that he has judged to be, you know, in need of judgment, uh, including Kenshin, but then also some of the other characters in the town. All the assassins get fought by Kenshin characters. You see all your favorite characters fighting assassins and big groups of enemies and in these very elaborate fight scenes. Uh, and so that's kind of what you would want in a Kenshin film. You get to see all your favorite characters fighting against impossible odds and using their skills and, and crazy styles to win. And they're very elaborate fights. And like I said, the fights are very well done. Um, and I think Kenshin participates in some of these, but eventually uh, Kenshin and Anishi fight. Um, they, you know, Kenshin confronts Anishi where Kado is and they fight. And they have this very long, involved fight that I think goes on for like 15 minutes. It, 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 this felt long. I liked it. It was it was well done. It was, you know, exciting. But it did feel like it went on a bit too long, like some anime sometimes does. Um, it's, it's very elaborate. But eventually, uh, after they fight, they kind of, you know, they, they trade blows, essentially. And eventually, Anishi runs at Kenshin with like a blade that he picked up. And Kenshin just kind of lets him stab him. It's, it's, it's strange, but I think, I think essentially at this point, they've been fighting for so long and Anishi hadn't, his rage hadn't subsided. So I think Kenshin was basically trying to figure out like how to make Anishi's rage subside. And maybe he thought that if Anishi finally was able to stab him, that would happen. And so Anishi stabs him uh, and then he gets angry because I think Kenshin didn't fight back. Like I think he wanted to beat Kenshin kind of man to man or at his own game uh, and Kenshin didn't fight back. So Anishi gets angry. And at this point, uh, one of the Chinese gangsters that helped Anishi with this whole plot comes in, says, like, did you think I was a fool? And aims a gun at 
Karu. I know he eventually ends up at Karu. I don't know if he aims it at everyone, but he eventually aims it at Karu. Uh, and then he starts to pull the trigger, and Anishi jumps in front to stop the bullet, which shows, hey, Anishi still has some good in him, even though he's kind of a mass murderer at this point. But he saved Karu. Um, so Anishi takes the bullet, and then he turns around and starts beating up the Chinese uh, gangster. Uh, and at this point, Karu like, tells him, like, stop, no, you'll kill him, which, again good instinct but this person has already killed many many people i believe at this point so another death probably isn't going to be that big of a deal to him but you know she's trying and then kenshin eventually stops him she, he grabs his arm so he can't punch the chinese uh, gangster anymore so and then kenshin thanks inishi for protecting kadu but uh, you know inishi gets a little angry because he you know, i don't understand this but you know there's, there's a lot of rage in him uh but he gets angry because you know, i guess he was able to protect Carter, but he really wanted to protect his sister but he wasn't strong enough he was too young you know he gets upset about that and then it flash for it flashes forward to anishi going to prison he's in prison because he was a gangster and also he murdered a bunch of people uh and while in prison he gets a note from Kadu. uh she gives him tomoe's journal which was sent to her in the film. Like she got it from uh, one of the characters who came with Tomoe's journal. Uh, and she gave it to Kadu to give to Kenshin. I think Kadu didn't actually give it to Kenshin, which is a little odd, but she gave it to Anishi, which is sweet, with a note saying, you know, this is this is your sister's diary. You know, I hope it answers your questions or something along those lines. Uh, and Anishi starts to read. And I think this might be the first time he gets to see Tomoe's feelings for Kenshin. I don't think he knew fully that she actually did love him. I think maybe she thought or he thought that, uh, you know, maybe Kenshin had killed her for some other reason, or, she, you know, she just got in the way of something. But I think this was the first instance where he got to see his sister's uh, feelings for Kenshin. And he, you know, he's sad. He starts to cry, and he's also in jail. He's probably sad for that, too. Um, a little odd that, that Kenshin's wife's diary didn't make it to Kenshin, but that's fine. I mean, I bet Kyle didn't want that in, in her house anyways. Uh, so the dojo was rebuilt. It was it was destroyed in the big fighting that had happened, or at least it was damaged. So they they fixed it up, uh, and so you see the rebuilt dojo with students learning, and uh, Yahuko is definitely there. Uh, and you also see a few other Kenshin characters after the fight. You know they're wounded. And Sagada is definitely there. He's wounded, but you know still in his like boyish, happy Sagada, uh, you know personality. And then after this, after you see everyone's okay. It flashes forward to uh, Kenshin and Karu at a grave, and they're they're at Tomoe's grave. And uh, Karu is praying. I think Kenshin is also praying, but it focuses on Karu. And then they walk away, and she asks Kenshin what he prayed for. Uh, and Kenshin says, "You know, I said, I, I pr you know, I said I prayed to say thank you, I'm sorry, and goodbye." Um, and so, you know, that was a little little nice moment. And then he reaches out and grabs Karu's hand which might be the first affection that he's shown her that we've seen at least. So everyone's happy. They can end up together. Um, and then the film ends. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a good film. It's a, it's especially surprising that it's a good, well-made Kenshin film. And it's made with love. I, you know, I, I liked it. I liked the beginning more than I liked the final, uh, but you should watch them both. They, they tell interesting stories. They're well done. If you like, Kenshin or anime or Japanese films or martial arts films or just action in general, this is a good this is a good choice. And it's on Netflix, so you can watch it, you know, in the comfort of your own home. So that's Rurouni Kenshin the Final, which is streaming now on Netflix. I think it came out like a month ago, but I just I missed it because I don't know. I've <laughs> been busy. That's Rurouni Kenshin the Final. Uh, if you liked this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot, make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.